for YouTube. A golden era of our childhoods and generally UK culture. Whether it be mostly faked pack openings, the pink slips between some of the biggest YouTubers in the scene, videos like these shaped us from an early age. Hi again. It's me. What's up guys, Nepenthes here. Guys, how's it going this massive? What is going on lads? Alright mate, how you doing? Well, Hi guys, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen. Hello guys, it's Chris here. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the career mode. I've decided to go with the team QPR. Now. How is it going guys and girls? It's okay. I got hazard. Hazard? I got hazard mum. What does that mean? I fuck a horse! Uh, that's Beastie Alice. Shut up bitch, I don't care, I just want my horse orgy! Like, it's genuinely not an over-exaggeration. Most of the YouTubers you see on the platform now are inspired by the content creators of the time. But some of those guys were content creators of that time, and that time alone. It's easy to get nostalgic looking back at some of the guys that were making sensational content seven or eight years ago in FIFA's Prime. But as less people play the game, as less people make content on the game, where exactly did those guys go? Where are some of the FIFA YouTubers that disappeared from the scene? Now, I want to preface this video, right, by saying, look, listen, I am, believe it or not, a YouTuber or con whatever you want to say, right? So I understand the way this goes. The Sidemen have probably created an unrealistic target for most content creators in just staying unbelievably relevant for such a long period of time. As YouTube enters, what, its 17th or 18th year, we arrive at a point where guys that were making content 10 years ago just don't want to make content anymore. And you see guys actually retiring from YouTube. I know it's a mental thing to say. I am really old. So I hope that this doesn't come across as disrespectful to any of the people mentioned in this video. They genuinely all had such a strong part in my childhood. Certainly the ones that I go into detail with, the ones that I was watching all the way through my school years. A small bean of a child trying to play pro clubs and get away with listening to music by putting headphones through his sleeve. It was simpler times and it was simpler times on YouTube. With ultimate team wages between massive YouTubers for FIFA coins, 45% of all videos on the platform featuring some kind of coin sponsor and lads no older than 20 losing their minds over slightly darker pixels on a screen. Royce! Oh, oh. Yes! 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 Oh, fuck me! I've just woken my parents up. And one of those guys providing that content in the early days? Gone. They see me rolling. Now, I know memories are flooded back already for some of you lot. Gonth was pulling in hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions at times as well. Stuff like his Pink Slips versus KSI, collaborating with the likes of an Eson Gibb and Road to Shore. He was one of the classics, you know, doing foot drafts, doing, as I said, wages and shit. Packing a woman on FIFA 15 before they'd even had the controversy of being added to the recent game. Oh my God! Mayday! Mayday! What the fuck? Is that a girl? edited stuff that was like a little bit misleading in a time where it was okay to actually be misleading like the slot machine videos but they were actually pretty creative his prime probably between fifa 12 or fifa 13 and fifa 17 but just simply wouldn't get away with some of the titles that he produced back in the day now imagine making a video of the blackest team on fifa now ironically then left back we've got a guy who's called black man what a coincidence he actually is a black man. This was prime KSI Ola GDB team, no rules content. And he was still doing pretty decent numbers, sort of like two, three years ago, but with compilations and thumbnails that were just like sex baiting, basically. And realistically, Gaunt's channel, right, is one of the main reasons I came to like record this video, I think, like now. I saw a few tweets about it and like the views that he's pulling in now. Obviously, he's got a, a channel that's got over a million subscribers, but in terms of views, they're not representative of a channel that is of his size. But the fact of the matter is he's still uploading daily and I really wanted to actually understand why and the truth of it all he's getting the bag I mean he quite literally made a video titled you seven by till I die where he basically explains the fact that a coin sponsor is paying him enough to continue to upload and in his own words without you seven by on my channel I would not be uploading as dead as it is they've somehow kept it alive I looked into the comments and I think just kind of unashamedly he's just uploading most days so he can get the bag from you seven by and they'll only probably maybe pay him 
if he uploads videos, and that's the reason why he's still doing it. And I watched the videos um, that he's made recently. They are just pretty kind of relaxed. It is a pretty similar formula. The thumbnails are pretty similar each time. They're probably of a bygone era as well. He's ultimately still getting paid to just create content, whether his heart's really in it or not. So whether the views are there or not, it doesn't really matter. I think the game's just up, you know, until you seven buy stop paying. But hey, get the bag however you want, man. Another one that's going to be nostalgic. I'll let the intro do the talking. If you want coins, some FIFA coins. If you want coins. I can't lie, I loved this guy back in the day, yeah. When I was just starting out, Momo FIFA HD uploads were just positive vibes. Well, maybe not necessarily positive, because there was some not positive. You know what I mean? Good vibes. Where's the animator that made all of these lots intros, yeah? Because he was everywhere. That's the real mystery of this video. Momo was obviously doing like FIFA, like ultimate team stuff. Oh, why did you work out? Damn. But he was also doing like compilation based stuff as well going through like people like other content creators like most lucky packs for example rage moments or whatever and what i found interesting actually is that like that content still kind of exists now or did until like very recently my good friend visa was doing sort of compilate like rage compilations and stuff on fifa and doing like really well with them up until like two years ago when he started doing like different content so there was still like very much a space in the scene for momo it was definitely like of the time in the way that he presented it but like you know a little bit of adapting and it probably would have worked now and the thing is he still uploads again though views are like you know like a lot lower than you would expect for a channel of his size don't mean that again in a bad way it's gonna happen to everybody at some point the good thing is what i love about momo here is i feel like he is quite he's actually really genuine like any video that he's made it actually just seems like he's making it for the love of it he's not got like some mental coin sponsor anytime he comes back he does actually just like make the video because he wants to make it in his most recent video in his intro he came back and was basically sort of a evaluating what he wanted to do with his career but either way momo i hope you you know you find out what you what you want to do it's, it's good to see the guy back he looks so different it makes me so old what i do love though is the fact that he's literally just kept the intro from all them years ago and just edited the fifa 24 like coin symbol over the top that's my practical king now for similar mold we have fifa monster and i'm gonna lump like keanu boss and like a few guys in that youtube group into this sort of Pot here as well. Again, for those that don't know, in a similar time, sort of between FIFA 13 and FIFA sort of 16, these guys were doing a lot of wager stuff. They felt like the kind of beta squad before beta squad, if that makes sense. Of kind of like an up and coming group. Obviously, beta squad are like clear, clear, clear now. But it was a time where they were coming up in like a very like exciting YouTube group. This was kind of that, but for the FIFA scene. I think like the real SMA was in there. As I said, Keanu, FIFA Monster, and Momo, I guess, was part of it, I think, too. My memory's like failing me a little bit here. But these guys basically they're quality man they did like wages pink slips pack openings again and yeah fever monster i think was probably one of the more high profile disappearances because like you actually it's really hard to track this guy low key but you can like he's still on his like insta i think he's still got his social media active over there and basically he went into a career of music and he was probably most known i would say for the playing fifa tune when i'm making videos online with Randolph originally, then he did a remix with KSI. So he was known really for, for sort of FIFA stuff and the music side of it as well. And that's what he went on to pursue. Like he changed his channel to just Paris with two R's rather than FIFA Monster. All the FIFA videos I think are still there, but obviously it's more branded now as a music channel where he uploads like songs that he's been working on, whatever. I think he did a project like two years ago. There's not been much on there since. But I went on his Insta and the most recent captions talk about new music coming out soon. So yeah, he's not uploading a crazy amount of time, but yeah, hopefully we'll get some some new music from the guy. And I think as well, I think he'd worked with the Sidemen recently on stuff I want to say. I, well, I say recently. I think it was the diss track era. You'll know that tomorrow when you hit a da na 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 and I think he maybe did some stuff for them on like a Christmas tune as well. I can't remember. So yeah, moral of the story, we're getting some new FIFA Monster music soon. And I, for one, will be looking out for it. And if he's going to do music stuff, like before he kind of dipped away from YouTube, he was doing like some music tutorial stuff, which I personally watch a lot of. I watch a lot of that content, yeah. Bring that back as well, bro. Because like there's definitely a space for that in the scene too. If you wanted to pivot into that content creation. Or alternatively, if he's just focusing on the music stuff, that's cool too. He also might have a child, according to his Insta. And that just really... 
Fuck it, I'm 47, mate. Now, the next one is a guy that I'm closest to, probably out of anyone that's going to be in this video or that I've, like, li been linked with closest to in the scene. And that is the boy himself, Adriano. No, not the player that had 143 shot power on Pez 6. Adriano! You know how we talk about, like, streets will never forget? footballers the streets will always remember adriano bro some of his videos classics playing as michael jackson today that's a lot of kids for sex right he used to do um content basically where he'd play ridiculous football games that were like absolutely terrible that isn't a face anymore in an era where you could you could do that and really bang some views i did a bit more of that as well like four years ago and honestly his videos doing that were an inspiration for that actually too funny probably in this modern era definitely like edge it would still fly. I am going to do sex to a child. It would still fly. It was it was so funny that the content just was never consistent. But that's fine because it, it makes the videos that do actually come out even more special. I think he tweeted once that he was gonna come back. I don't really know. Whether it happens or not, I'm not sure. I don't really know what he does now. I wanna know he likes like one of my tweets like every six months. Oh my friend. So I know he's still out there. I hope he's doing well. He's one of my favorite people in the scene. He also made me try and convince Danny Mills that Danny Mills was my dad. Apparently, you hooked up with my mum around 21 years ago. Gave her a good rogering. Put that in quotes. For a YouTube video on my channel, so that was fun. I think he's just, you know, it's, again, sometimes content creators just evolve past wanting to actually make the content. You know, he was very sporadic in his upload sort of schedule anyway, to the point where I just, I think it was just more of like a, I'll upload if I want to, rather than I want to make it my job and career. And that's blessed, man. I have so much respect for anybody who does that. I think you have to have an element of that. Otherwise, people will be able to tell that you don't enjoy the content. There's like a legend, like lore in there somewhere that we get a return of Adriano. So please, can we make that happen? And there's so many more, the likes of Finch, who's I think gone down the line of like cryptocurrency and also fitness stuff. Keanu Boss, who I mentioned earlier, I think he's a personal trainer now. We've got Max Plays, who opened up his own gym and he's just like still really good friends with the lads. Like I, he went on holiday with like Chip and like Harry from the Sidemen, like still out here, just living his best life. Rossi HD was an old school OG member of the Ultimate Team community, really. He uploaded a video just under a year ago, basically explaining where he'd gone and he was just like kind of lost a little bit in terms of content. I was a very, very lost content creator. I had massively fallen out of love with FIFA, which is a game I obviously grew up on and, and made a name for myself on, made a YouTube channel on. Again, such a normal thing to happen. Like these guys were there for like the genesis of FIFA content creation. It is so rare to still have them about let alone pulling views at this point. You know, you've got people like Matt HD Gamer and the Penthes. Why are you there? Two Sync, I think, still upload as well. Who we are like really, really old school. And I have so much respect for them to even still be about. Matt HD Gamer could still be uploading about Bourbons now, and I would have a lot of respect for it. AJ3 as well. He's doing sick numbers. Again, you know, a guy who's been in the scene for so long, it is really impressive to still be doing that without like losing interest or just losing general relevance too. You got Lasty, you've got MGH, for example. Those old school career modes, I mean, they are literally what inspired me. The first series that I ever made on my channel was a FIFA career mode series, and it was inspired by the likes of MGH or PlayStation 3 gaming as he was back then. It was inspired by Arsenal Giants PS3. It was inspired by Cal Freezy's fucking QPR career mode. Stoke are just getting the Dench sausage at the moment. It was the Kick Invitational fam. That was genuinely like a, an event in like all of YouTube history, bro. When I found out that FIFA player was Spencer Owen for the first time. We're outside Dizzy's house. It's also KSI's house because they live together because they're a little bit like this, if you know what I'm saying. I physically felt like 50% of my brain cells fall out of my head. But obviously we've gone through the nostalgia, right? And yes, you know, as I explained, it's very normal, I think, for a YouTuber to do this profession for like eight or nine years and then decide they want to sack it off. I've had this channel for 10 years. I don't really want to like quit at any point soon, but I would understand if someone did want to during that time. That makes sense. But I think the big bigger issue is FIFA itself. If we look back in the day, really, for a lot of this content when it was being uploaded, right, FIFA just had that element of being fun. And I don't want to be a nostalgia merchant that's like, oh, back in my day, you know, because ultimately there are, there are still good things about FIFA like now. 
maybe. The simplicity of FIFA back in the day was actually really helpful. The idea that you could have like a, a team of silver Brazil players and they'd actually be good when compared up against some of the best cards in the game. Like it was actually hard to build a good squad. There was actually some level of storyline to a race to division one type of series because it actually took you months to get good players. Whereas now you're loading up the game like a week in bro. All the streamers have legends and icons already. Man I just said legends as well by the way. That shows my age. Like if we really deep it, who's actually doing good numbers in the FIFA community at the moment? It's not the guys who are doing like series and stuff or like predominantly anyway. Again, I don't mean to be like blase and like dismissive of anybody, right? And anybody series, but it's, it's a lot of the guys who are doing sort of similar style. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a modern era of FIFA content, right? It's like your foot crunch guys. Uh, there's a guy called Chuffsters. There's, a, there's another one and I cannot remember what his channel name is, but he's really fucking good. I'm gonna find it. Hang on a second. Pi Pi your pa it's P A Z J O R. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. I'm genuinely sorry, but his channel's fucking sick. But it's a lot of that sort of content, you know, very blue sky backgrounds, straight to the point editing, and like very creative ideas. In fairness, it's it's not necessarily even anything to do with Ultimate Team, quite frankly. It's just how can we stretch and bend the game to be something that's like a very like nice package for potentially a younger audience to enjoy as well. And then streaming, really. You've got guys like Nick. You've got obviously Danny Aaron's was streaming it. He's he's more of like a lifestyle guy, I guess now. And you've got Pi face as well. Streaming's kind of taken over, but again, the numbers aren't there, like, consistently for everybody. I think overall, guys, a lot of people, at the same time, grew out of wanting to play and watch FIFA a lot. So that whole generation that watched the original Pink Slips videos and watched those original YouTubers kind of grew up and arrived at a point where they didn't enjoy where the game was at anymore and so just stopped making that content or watching it and consuming it at all. So now you've got like a new generation of the YouTubers that I just mentioned, for example, who are absolutely killing it, but it's not the same at all as the, as the type of content that we were making or consuming back in the day. And I think ultimately that's why a lot of those YouTubers kind of did just fade and disappear off the, like, the scene, if that makes sense. Because either they just, you know, didn't really want to pursue it that much and they were just like cool I've done my bit in the scene I'm out and ended on their own terms or in a couple of guys' case just carried on making the same content as before because they enjoy making it but obviously you know YouTubers just moved away from that style of content from those style of thumbnails potentially and so like views aren't as high as before again I never want to come across as someone that's gonna like view shame or whatever like we all start and end somewhere I will go through times where I don't get the views that I want to or whatever but at the end of the day it's about enjoying it. And as long as everybody enjoys the content that they're making and the people that watch that content enjoy it, then that is literally all that matters. Is it something we should be concerned about as far as a FIFA community is concerned? Absolutely. I think you already saw it with the introduction of like price ranges. <laughs> That kind of ended a lot of the content that you could make on FIFA back in that time. And again, FIFA just isn't as fun anymore, man. I'm not even going to lie. There are some people out there that are killing it. You know, the overall scene is is, is definitely smaller than it was back then. The golden era is over. You know, it is what it is. Are there any other YouTubers maybe that you were watching back in that time that you haven't really seen that much of that have maybe gone on to do other things? Because you know, again, a lot of these guys, they're just living a different life now. They're out there. They've made their money. They've done the business. They've impacted everyone's childhoods and they've just cut and done something that they now want to do in, in an adult life. If you enjoyed this video, though, feel free to slap a like on it and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.